Moving on to episode 12, the student council members were ready to enter the labyrinth to deal with the Ophelia case. The four main members of the student council, namely Godfrey, Carlos, Tim, and Lesidi, would be at the forefront of the search. However, Godfrey didn't expect this to happen so soon. It seemed that Ophelia had accelerated her plans after reading the movements of the student council. Meanwhile, Oliver and the others continued to worry about Pete. At least they knew that the seniors were working hard to rescue the victim. However, Guy couldn't bear it any longer, as several days had already passed. Unfortunately, there was nothing they could do at the moment. Guy insisted on going to where Pete was to bring him food. Suddenly, Nanao advised him to stop. She said that the deceased couldn't eat. Guy didn't expect Nano to think that Pete was already dead. In reality, Nano still didn't know the truth. However, in her hometown, 80% of those who went missing in the battlefield were found lifeless. According to Oliver, Nano was too pessimistic. Oliver believed that the monsters at that time were created to capture their victims alive. So there must be a reason why the victims had to be captured alive. Still in a tense state, Michaela suddenly reminded everyone that class time was approaching. Continuing the debate here would be pointless. After that, Oliver immediately approached Gwyn to make sure of something. He wanted to know if Gwyn would also help in rescuing Pete. As it turned out, Gwyn and Shannon would enter the labyrinth to assist the student council. However, it should be noted that Ophelia lived on the third floor of the labyrinth. The search process would not be easy. Gwyn also emphasized that he couldn't ask their allies to act in this situation. On his way back, Oliver met Tullio. He informed Oliver that the contest he had organized was cancelled due to the current situation. However, in reality, Tullio just wanted to advise Oliver not to do anything foolish. Meanwhile, Katie sought help from Master Garland but was refused. Master Garland said that Pete had not yet reached the stage where the teachers could intervene. According to the rules, new teachers could only get involved when the chances of survival dropped drastically or when it had been more than eight days. In Kimberly, students couldn't rely on the teachers to save them. Afterwards, Oliver met Michaela. Previously, Michaela had asked for help from her father, Theodore. She utilized her position as his daughter. However, her father naturally rejected her and stated that Michaela should be able to protect her friends on her own. Therefore, Michaela had the intention of entering the labyrinth tonight. And of course, Oliver vehemently opposed this idea. Michaela informed him that she had calculated not to save Pete in order to ensure the safety of others when they were first attacked. And in the end, that's what happened. Michaela wanted to take responsibility. Otherwise, she wouldn't be able to face Pete again. Because Michaela was determined, Oliver decided to join as well. However, Michaela prohibited him. If the two of them disappeared, Kitty, Guy, and Nano would surely enter the labyrinth as well. Nevertheless, Oliver would not allow Michaela to enter the labyrinth alone, no matter what happened. Suddenly, Vera's voice was heard stating that Oliver and Michaela's actions would only lead to negative outcomes. Vera informed them that she had a plan. She wanted to discuss it with both of them and also with Katie. Subsequently, Oliver, Michaela, Kitty, and Vera gathered to discuss something. Since Vera was Ophelia's batchmate, Oliver wanted to know the likelihood of a successful rescue. Vera estimated that the chances of Pete still being alive were at the highest only 20%. According to her, Ophelia couldn't be compromised at the moment. For the sake of her research, she could easily sacrifice the lives of the kidnapped students. However, the technique she used took time. Suddenly, Vera stated that she could increase the chances to 20.1%. Before discussing further, Vera wanted to mention that her research was currently at a standstill. Besides the issues from yesterday, Mr. Darius, who supported her research, had also disappeared without a trace. Therefore, she wanted to collaborate with Katie. Vera was also interested in studying interspecies communication and conducting research together. So, she had an offer to make it happen. Vera would train them to prepare against Ophelia. Even though they couldn't win, at least they could save Pete and get him out. In return, after this issue was resolved, Vera would become Katie's research partner. Without hesitation, Katie accepted it immediately. She felt that this offer was very beneficial and not detrimental. However, Oliver still had suspicions if Vera had ulterior motives. 
Vera stated that they could decide that while being cautious of her actions. Although Katie was very enthusiastic, Vera forgot to mention that she did not include Katie. After agreeing to Vera's plan, Michaela and Katie approached another person suitable for the plan, Nano. Katie apologized for not being able to participate. Vera believed that Katie lacked experience and unfortunately, Michaela shared the same sentiment. Meanwhile, Oliver approached Guy to inform him that he was not allowed to join as well. Although annoyed, Guy admitted that he didn't want to be a burden. Guy handed over his plant tool to Oliver. It was the seed that created the root barricade during the battle with Joseph. Guy also prepared a supply for Oliver and asked him to share it with Pete. Oliver promised to return with Pete. Afterward, Oliver, Michaela, Nano, and Vera would enter the labyrinth through the usual route. Before that, Vera handed Mill a hand over to Katie. If Vera couldn't return alive, that hand would be the key to deciphering her research results. With that settled, they set out to find Pete while being trained by Vera. Pete, who had been captured, was starting to regain consciousness. Upon putting on his glasses, Pete was shocked to find himself confined in a place entirely red and fleshy. He saw many other students who were also imprisoned there. Pete finally remembered that he had been captured by a monster. Suddenly, he heard footsteps approaching. Pete immediately pretended to faint again. Back to Oliver, Vera reiterated that Ophelia had inherited succubus blood. Succubi mixed to genes from various species in their wombs and gave birth to a child. They inherited a plan to create a perfect child over several generations. However, their efforts ended in failure. That's why succubi are considered a rare species today. But the Salvadori family found another use for their wombs. They used them as a place to give birth to chimeras. And it seemed that Ophelia needed a lot of magical energy to give birth to chimeras. That's why she kidnapped juniors to drain their magical energy. Vera herself didn't know what it felt like when magical energy was absorbed. However, it's likely that the students would be made unconscious throughout the process. It could be said that the process was similar to extracting sperm. Not literally, but more in terms of the magical element possessed by males. Michaela concluded that Ophelia only needed male magical energy. Michaela and Oliver panicked immediately. Both of them didn't want to reveal this to Vera, but Nano suddenly told them that Pete had the reverse. Nano felt that there was no need to hide this information. Vera was a colleague who was risking her life as well. Before heading to the second floor, they made a stop at the studio. Oliver wanted to know Vera's opinion on how Pete would be treated. Unfortunately for Ophelia, Reverso was currently a nuisance that disrupted the chimera birth process. If Pete were discovered, Vera couldn't guarantee his life. In the studio, they reunited with Marco after the last time they were separated on the second floor. Oliver informed Marco that Katie was doing fine. It turned out that Marco wasn't targeted by the cameras. This proved that the chimeras moved according to Ophelia's commands. For now, Ophelia could still think clearly. After that, Vera provided them with some potions. These potions were meant to counteract the scent emitted from Ophelia's body. Meanwhile, Godfrey and Carlos were in a battle to eliminate cameras on the second floor. Lessity, who was with the team, was doing the same. Coincidentally, Godfrey and Carlos encountered Kevin Walker on the second floor. Kevin was a senior one grade above them. Kevin was actually searching for the student council members. He wanted to deliver the map of the third floor labyrinth right away. Kevin had gone around as usual and noted everything on that map. Godfrey didn't expect to find Kevin on the third floor in the midst of this situation. Unfortunately, Kevin couldn't locate Ophelia's studio. Nevertheless, the map had become a valuable asset that could assist them. After that, Kevin said goodbye to go down to the deeper floors. Meanwhile, Oliver and the others encountered one of Ophelia's cameras. According to Vera, it would typically take a third-year student to be able to fight against that chimera. However, this time, Oliver, Michaela, and Nano had to push themselves to save Pete. Therefore, Vera would show them how to defeat the chimera for them to learn. The first lesson was to study the opponent's characteristics. The chimera couldn't see clearly, which meant it couldn't move its tentacles and see at the same time. The second lesson was when facing a large monster, never stay still and disturb the enemy. And the third lesson was not to fight without a plan. After Vera kept misleading it, 
the Chimera began to ignore her bait. Ophelia's Chimera was a bit troublesome because it had limited intelligence. Therefore, this was the right moment to change the attack pattern. At first, Vera baited it by making simple movements to confuse its thoughts. When the enemy was thinking like that, that was the opportunity to attack. However, all these lessons were not as easy as they sounded. That's why the three of them fought together to cover the shortcomings in each lesson mentioned earlier. Oliver was determined to master the three lessons provided by Vera. Soon, they would return to the second-floor labyrinth, the busy forest.